Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to get started with the Adobe Creative Cloud, 10 things beginners want to know how to do. Now if you've been a creative for a long time or you're just now a new creative, you may know that Adobe has traditionally offered creative, creative products or Creative Suite uh, via what's called we call a perpetual license, meaning you buy a license for the product, you get that version, you get all the benefits of that version, and you get any bug fixes that may come out um, between versions. But if you wanted new features, at that point you'd have to wait for the next major version, which could be anywhere from 12, 18, 24 months, and then you'd have to pay an upgrade fee, of course, to get the new features of that new version. The difference is Creative Cloud is a small monthly membership fee, and the minute you sign up, you get access to all of the creative tools. So you don't have to pick a particular suite, you don't have to pick a particular product, you can get the entire uh, offering. So once you're signed up, not only do you get all the creative tools, but you also get services such as cloud storage, being able to sync files and share files. You get uh, access to hosted services, the ability to create applications and host websites. So it's a, it's a nice package or membership of not only the best tools for your desktop, but also the best hosted services for your creative needs. Now with that said, we're going to walk through a lot of these things in this video, but the, the point is this is really for beginners just getting started, want to know more about Creative Cloud, how to get started, how to sign up, how to use it, how to install your applications, the 10 things beginners want to know how to do. So let's jump right in. Now, if you're brand new, you haven't uh, gone to Creative Cloud, haven't signed up yet, of course, I'm on the adobe.com uh, homepage, and of course, there's always going to be a link somewhere on the homepage for Creative Cloud. But if you don't want to look around for the link, the, one, the way that's always going to take you there is if you just simply go to adobe.com slash creative cloud, that will always take you directly to the Creative Cloud uh, homepage where you can then... Uh, learn more about Creative Cloud and sign up for Creative Cloud if you choose to. So, uh, for example, uh, there are videos that you can watch on how to take advantage of Creative Cloud, links to learn more about Creative Cloud, new features, and of course the ability to join Creative Cloud and pay your membership fee. Now we offer Creative Cloud for individuals like me, not just, just me, my, uh, you know, I'm the only one in my company, I can uh, sign up for Creative Cloud and get access to all, all the software and all the services, or Creative Cloud for teams. This would be smaller companies, small work groups, where I don't want to have to buy an individual license for each individual person. I can just buy a team license and pay you know, a, a set price for the number of team members I have and that way I can control and central manage everything, uh, distribute for new folks that come in, take away for folks that are leaving the company or leaving the project. It's a great way to manage small work groups. And we even have Creative Cloud for Enterprise if you are a large company or represent a large company and you want Creative Cloud for a larger organization. We have ways to do that as well. So pick the one you want, sign up for it, join, and then once you're signed up, the next process is simply start using it. So first one, number one, how to get started is to join Creative Cloud. Number two, how to sign in. So uh, that URL, once, you're, once you've joined, is creative.adobe.com. And once you get to this page, you will use your Adobe ID, the same one you registered when you um, signed up for Creative Cloud. And your uh, Creative Cloud password or your your Adobe ID password and you can even have it remember you and then you will sign in to your Creative Cloud membership now in this case since I've already been a Creative Cloud member it took me to the files area and it shows me the files I have on my 20 gigs of storage with my Creative Cloud membership of course if you're brand new you won't have any files there yet. We'll talk about how you can get your files into there as well. So let's go to number three, downloading your apps. So when we uh, click on the apps tab, uh, this will dispel the first myth is that you're not really running these applications in the cloud, even though we call it Creative Cloud. You're gonna pick whichever ones you want to download and download them to your desktop and install them as you always did. 
So you don't have to be online once the application's been downloaded and installed. You can be on a plane using Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, whatever you choose. And uh, your computer only has to be on the internet like once a month for it to validate to your membership. And it will start to warn you if it's gone past the 30 day period, hey, you need to connect to the internet so we can just make sure you're still a paid member uh, to allow you to keep using your applications. But other than that, you can be online, offline, doesn't matter. You're installing the applications and using the applications on your desktop, not in a web browser, not in the cloud. All right, so I would pick whichever applications I want to download and um, download them. And of course, we get applications that we've always had in the Creative uh, Suite, such as Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, um, Premiere Pro, Flash Professional, Dreamweaver, so forth and so on. But we also get new applications that were never available in the Creative Suite, such as Adobe Muse, which is a web design tool for uh, designers, and even Photoshop Lightroom, which was always available only as a separate product, never part of the suite. But as a Creative Cloud member, I get the access to download it. Now you uh, have the ability to download touch app plugins. So if you're using something like Photoshop Touch or Adobe Ideas, you download and install those plugins so those files that you create on those touch applications will work in their desktop counterparts, Photoshop and Illustrator. And I, um, we're going to come back to this, but you should definitely download the Creative Cloud connection. That will allow you to sync files um, uh, or sync your documents to the Creative Cloud and share them. We're going to talk about that as one of the upcoming things people want to know how to do. So the main thing is you download your applications, you install them. Uh, once you've installed them, you can begin using them and um, use them as you always did. And of course, as we add new products and new services, they will always show up on this page. So with that said, let's talk about number four, install the Creative Cloud Connection. Now I've already downloaded and installed it and that put this little icon up on my menu bar. And this little icon basically allows me to access, first of all, turn on or off my syncing, which I have it on, and it allows me to access my Creative Cloud Files folder. Now this is a file folder that is on my hard drive. You can tell it where you want to put it. It'll put it in your uh, standard library area, um, or your home area, I should say, of your uh, existing user account and you can use it like any other folder. You can drag files into it, you can save files to it, you can open files that are already in it and work on those files. You treat it like any other folder on your hard drive because it is like any other folder on your hard drive. But the difference is that this particular folder, whatever you put in here, will automatically sync up to the cloud and therefore be accessible not only from the web but also any other computers you have Creative Cloud set up on. So if I have a desktop at, at work and a laptop at home or that I travel with, I can have Creative Cloud installed on both, even if they're Mac and Windows, and therefore access the same files um, no matter which machine I started on or ended up on. And by the way, that's another benefit, a hidden benefit, that if you are a Creative Cloud member and you have dual platforms, maybe at one Mac and one PC, you can download the applications for Mac or PC with your Creative Cloud membership without having to buy, as you did before, a version for Mac and a version for Windows. So install the desktop sync and um, set your files up that you want to access there and it could be any kinds of files but of course Creative Suite or Adobe files work better. Um, and then the next one is how do I upload to Creative Cloud? Now there's two ways to do it. We can of course drag a file from anywhere into that folder and it will upload um, as you would expect. But there's another way. I'm going to show you if we head back to the web browser and we head back up to the files area, that's showing me the same files that are in that folder. So if I happen to be somewhere else or on someone else's computer and I logged in to my Creative Cloud um, web portal here, I can drag a file directly from um, that particular computer's hard drive and drag it into the browser and you can see up here in the upper left hand corner it is now uploading that file to my Creative Cloud 
um, storage. So you can do it one of two ways. If you have the desktop connection installed, great, drag your files right into the folder, save your files right into the folder, work on your files right in the folder. But if you're not, if you don't have that installed yet or you're on a different computer and you logged in via a web browser to Creative Cloud, you can still get files up to the Creative Cloud by dragging them right into the browser or download them from Creative Cloud from the browser to the computer you're working on. So it is truly cloud-based storage. Okay, so there's the file there. It's rendering a preview of it now. It's um, uploaded it, and here it is. I can click on it. I can get a larger preview of it. I can even go in and work with the layers of this particular file. So this, this is a Photoshop file, and it's showing me the layers that I can turn on and turn off and work with this file um, from the standpoint of previewing it just as if I were in Photoshop in this case. Now let's go back to the files area for a second here. And by the way that was number six, turning layers on and off. You can do that uh, if the file layering is supported, which Photoshop files it is. Here's a file that I created with Photoshop Touch. And by the way, you can see that it synced it uh, with desktop connection as well. So it, I drug it from that folder up to the cloud in the browser. And then, of course, the desktop connection says, hey, there's a new file. Let me download it back to the folder. So now that is in my folder on this particular computer as well. But let's uh, go back to this file here where this is one that I created initially with Photoshop Touch. Um, I wanted a friend of mine to take a look at this particular file and give me their opinion. So we got the ability to share a file. So that was that will be number seven. You click the little share icon. You will make the file public, meaning someone else can see it besides you. Uh, you can choose to allow comments or not. You can choose to allow downloads or not. And then you just simply enter your client, friend, customer, colleague, boss, email address, and send. Now, they will get a link to be able to view that file in a web browser. And whether, they, whether they've ever heard of Creative Cloud or not, they don't have to be Creative Cloud members to take advantage in your review process. You can just simply send them the link and away they go. Now, if I do click on the comments area, I can see that my uh, friend uh, T here, he, he said, wow, what an amazing capture. This would make an awesome card. Great work. And that was last yesterday evening after I sent him the link to look at the file. And again, he doesn't necessarily have to be a Creative Cloud member, but he was able to add that comment because I was able to share a file. So that is number eight. Comments. Yes, you can do use uh, your Creative Cloud membership for a review process, sending the link out to multiple people, having them comment on the file. They'll be able to turn layers on and off as well. So for example, we can turn off layer number four or turn layer number four back on. And they can kind of walk through different scenarios of your file if you choose to have layers in the file that you set up. All right, so let's talk about number nine, getting updates. If we go back to our apps area, uh, this will always show us any updates that are available for the Creative Cloud. Now, um, there's another way to see if you have any updates. So if we, let's say if we click download here. Now I'm not gonna download Premiere, but I just click download to bring up the Adobe Application Manager. Once you install any of your Creative uh, Suite applications, uh, or Creative Cloud applications, I should say, the Application Manager will also be installed, and it will show you if you have any apps that you haven't or have downloaded, and whether or not they need any updates. You'll also, even if you don't go, you know, proactively go check, there will be a little icon, a little A icon, Adobe icon in the uh, menu bar, that once an update has been detected, it will show you, hey, you've got an update to Photoshop with either new features or bug fixes, go, do you want to download that update right now? So you can, you're, you're always able to choose when you want to update, whether you want to update or not. And of course, if there are new features, you get those new features before uh, people that are on perpetual licenses. So number 10, and this is a big one, this is new to Creative Cloud, and that is training. So if we click on training, 
in the browser here in our Creative Cloud membership, we not only get access to um, industry professional training, and we can learn about specific workflows, Creative Fills, or Adobe products, and the videos are organized by what you are trying to do. So you'll get videos from great uh, training providers that are out there, and including yours truly. Some of my videos are on here as well. And it's just great to be able to um, learn more about your creative products as part of your membership to Creative Cloud. You get this free, and in many cases, uh, or not free, but included training, uh, in many cases that is exclusive to Creative Cloud members. So the only place you're going to see that particular video is in your Creative Cloud membership. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. Getting started with Adobe Creative Cloud, 10 things beginners want to know how to do. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time or we'll see you in the cloud.